千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. As always, I want to extend my welcome to you. Thank you for joining us. I would like to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now, to be fully present and mindfully aware, as we are ready ourselves for this sacred process in the Tao with one another. I want to bring all seven virtues together and tie it together with non-contention. So as you can see in the title for this slide, I've got qi de, literally the seven virtues, then those lead to bu zhen, literally non-contention. So in the center of this light, I have the image, the yin and yang symbol representing the Tao itself. So this is the last and most important point from Lao Tzu. It is, in short, to apply the virtues of water to life situations, particularly when it comes to handling conflicts or bringing harmony to a difficult situation. So when there is a tense, potentially explosive situation, which we come across from time to time in our lives, a Tao cultivator will use the seven virtues of water to diffuse the explosive scenario, to sidestep contention, to bring the temperature down, to bring about peace. And this starts with the first virtue, dwelling in the place of natural humility, or what Lao Tzu would say as dwelling at the right location, at the right place. So this is to say that a Tao cultivator, when facing contention will practice the Tao of humility to ensure they are not the ones to cause contention or to make the situation worse. Now, when we talk about humility, it is a good thing to remind ourselves that there are so many conflicts that we see in life that can trace back to arrogance as a primary cause. When someone feels that arrogance, exhibits that arrogance, it is the beginning of the possibility for contention. Therefore, humility, the Tao of humility, is the antidote for that. Second, bring depth of understanding. And this is from the virtue of water, the feeling with great depth. That is because Tao cultivators approach the situation itself with the depth of understanding. That is to say, they will not assume that one side or the other must be at fault, but realize that there must be multiple perspectives that have not yet been reconciled. And then let's go to number three. Number three comes from the virtue of water, giving with great kindness. Here, Tao cultivators will give 
the gift of kindness to everyone. That is, Dao cultivators will treat both sides with compassion. Especially in a tense situation, it is all about sympathy and wanting to help, realizing that nobody really wants to fight. And nobody wins if fighting breaks out. Now let's go on to number four. This comes from the virtue of water to speak with great integrity, to be the trustworthy mediator who exhibits that integrity. So for Tao cultivators, due to their consistent cultivational practices, they are seen by everyone as impartial, fair-minded, and most importantly, trusted. They are exactly what people want to mediate a dispute. And this is the possibility to bring that dispute to a peaceful conclusion. Then number five, this comes from the virtue of water, where water governs with great administration. Apply to the Tao cultivator, administer both sides in an equitable way. That is, especially in a tense situation, a Tao cultivator will take care to treat everyone fairly, to be completely transparent, have everything above the table. No one feels neglected or slighted or left out. Everyone is respected. All perspectives are treated with serious intent and serious consideration. Then let's go to number six. Number six says, handle the conflicting views with capable skills. So this is from the virtue of water, which handles everything with great capability and versatility. This is because it is inevitable that in a conflict, the two sides, without a doubt, will all have a whole bunch of grievances. And this is where you need to have capabilities and flexibility to negotiate, to work with the complaining sides. Dow cultivators will then be able to guide people into forging a compromise with one another. And perhaps no one will like the compromise very much. Everybody wants to win, quote unquote, win for their side. But compromises are always possible to someone with the skills and capabilities stemming from the Tao. Lastly, the seventh virtue. Here we talk about timing. Choose the right time to bring peace, deriving from the virtue of water that says, Water always moves with great timing about following the natural schedule of heaven. Here, I think you and I can recall from life experiences that so much of life is all about timing. Remember how things used to be, that if something happens too soon, well, the timing isn't right yet. And in a conflict, when you try to bring both sides together too quickly, while well, perhaps the temperature is still too high, tension is still too high on both sides. But then you also don't want to wait too long. If it is too late, 
well, the greatest diplomacy in the world is going to be useless. The conflict has started. People have gotten hurt. They've been harmed. They've been injured or worse. So the timing of resolution is just as important as the resolution itself. All of these together, I think, make it pretty clear why someone will want to use the seven virtues of water in a situation where contention is a possibility or has already started. And this is why we then can remind everyone about water because it does not contend. It is therefore beyond reproach. That is the reason how we can use the seven virtues of water into life situations to bring about peace and harmony. As I mentioned, this is the last and most important point from Lao Tzu. I am very happy to be able to share this with everyone. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.